Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. What is up, homies? My name is Felix, and I am here back again with another video for you all today. And I'm going to be doing something a little bit different here today. I'm going to be talking about all the stuff that you'll actually need if you want to set up your own home studio, bedroom studio type deal. So obviously, there's a lot of videos on this already, but a lot of them are really general and kind of just reading through like a checklist of things. But I'm going to tell you from my own experience what you're going to need and what you're going to need for specific things too. Like if you want to record guitar, if you want to record vocals, if you want to do this, that, whatever, whatever your goal is here, hopefully this video should help you out. So make sure you guys go check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below along the playlist with songs I produce, my beats on my Discord, all that stuff. Go check it out if you'd like to do so. Also, if you're wondering where I got this super comfortable, sleek, well-fitting t-shirt along with these other ones as well, you can go to fisostore.com right now to get yourself any one of these epic designs in a hoodie, t-shirt, crew neck, long sleeve, whatever your heart desires. So yeah, now we can get into this video. <music> So let's just start with the super basics of what you're gonna need for your home studio. Let's say you just wanna make beats and that's all you wanna do. All you're really gonna need for that is a computer, a digital audio workstation. I use FL Studio. There's plenty of options out there, even some free options. And you're probably gonna need a couple plugins or drum kits. And then if you want your music to sound good, you're probably gonna need some type of headphones. Some people will tell you, oh, you need studio monitors, but I've personally been making beats for like five, six years and I have never used studio monitors. I just personally have never gotten around to getting them and I just like headphones better. So yeah, studio monitors slash speakers are not necessary. However, if you prefer using speakers to headphones, then just go ahead and get some speakers. But yeah, so that right there is the absolute basics of what you need to just start making beats and start, you know, cooking up some trap beats and stuff like that. But now we're going to get a little bit more advanced here and talk about some of the other extra things that you might want as well. So the first thing that you might possibly want is a MIDI keyboard. So a MIDI keyboard basically just allows you to control notes and sounds within your DAW. And this comes in really handy for a few different things. If you know how to play piano, you can play the melodies that you want to, and then it'll go into your computer. But honestly, for me, what I use it for even more often is just playing sounds, playing presets as I click through them in plugins. So it's important to take into account that there's different sizes of MIDI keyboards. There's some that are really small and have a few keys. There's some that are really big, like full piano sized 88 key key boards. You kind of just have to decide what's best for you. If you're a professional piano player or something, you might want to have a full 88 keys. But if you're just playing simple little melodies, maybe a couple different chords, you're not going to need a full huge keyboard. One major tip that's going to just apply to everything that I say here in this video is make sure you think about the things that you get and how they'll look within your setup before you actually get them. Because a huge thing for me is having my keyboard on my left side, because when I click through presets and stuff, I don't want to have to cross my arm over to hit the key. That's just a really small but also very important workflow thing that's gonna you know change the way you make beats and stuff for me I also have an l-shaped desk so I have somewhere to put my keyboard but for you you may just have a regular desk so you might want to get one of these this right here is a keyboard stand you might need one of these if you don't have the space to put your keyboard anywhere Along the same lines of the MIDI keyboard, you might also want like a drum pad thing or just a keyboard that has drum pads on it like mine does. If you're the type of person who likes to, you know, physically trigger drum sounds and record your patterns that way, then that might be something that you want to consider. So another thing that you're going to want when you get a little bit more advanced with your music, beat making stuff, you're going to want some sort of external hard drive or cloud backup or something like that. And if you're getting an external hard drive, you might want to get two just so you can back up one or whatever. I speak from experience when I say it's good to spend the extra money on storage because you don't want to lose all your beats and plugins and everything like that because that sure would suck. All right, so now let's say you're somebody who possibly wants to record your voice, make full songs and stuff, maybe record other people and mix their songs for them. Anything you might want to do that has to do with recording vocals. You're gonna need a microphone. This is not a video about microphones or anything, but there's mainly two different types of microphones. There's condenser microphones and there's dynamic microphones. This is a dynamic microphone. It's good for live recording. This one's a condenser microphone. It's generally more used for recording vocals and stuff like that. But honestly, whatever microphone you have is gonna work fine. As long as it records, you'll probably be good. If you are gonna be recording vocals or anything, you might wanna invest in some of these. 
Those over there are acoustic foam panels. I have some behind you uh, on the wall over there. Despite what some people think, those are not used for soundproofing. They're used for acoustic treatment. Acoustic treatment makes it so there's less reverb in your room, so you get a little bit better recordings. And soundproofing is pretty self-explanatory. Also, if you are recording vocals, you're gonna wanna have a little something like this or like this. This right here is a pop filter and it basically makes it to where some of the sounds that you say when you're recording vocals <coughs> aren't so harsh, like P's and S's and stuff like that. Also, you're probably gonna wanna get some type of a mic stand like this. If you wanna be standing up to record your vocals, which is actually better because it opens up your diaphragm more, you're gonna want one of these stand-up microphone stands. However, if you don't care about that, Oh my God. You can try out one of these smaller ones that clips to your desk. Also, you wanna consider if your microphone is a USB microphone or an XLR microphone. You know what a USB microphone is, it uses USB cable. An XLR microphone is gonna use a little cable that looks like this. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, that one looks kind of weird. I don't have a place on my computer where I can plug that thing into. Well, you'd be correct. And that's why you're gonna need an audio interface like this one right here. This one is probably the most common one that you're gonna see everywhere. It's a Focusrite Scarlett interface, and it basically just has a couple ports so you can plug stuff in. You can adjust the input volume. This is for monitoring if you have speakers plugged in, or if you have headphones plugged in right here. There's a little knob for that right there. And having an audio interface is also pretty essential if you wanna plug in a guitar cable. So for all the people out there who are interested in recording their guitar, if you have an electric guitar, there's basically two ways to record it. One, you can plug it directly into an audio interface, or you can also put a microphone in front of an amplifier and record the sound that way. But I'm just gonna be talking about the direct input straight into an audio interface uh, way of doing it. So if you're recording electric guitar into your audio interface, you're gonna need, again, a guitar and a guitar cable to obviously plug the guitar in. Also, if you're a newer guitar player, you're going to want something like this to put your guitar on. Really nice to have so that your precious guitar is not sitting on the ground. But let's say you're not a guitar player and you're a drummer who wants to record your drums. If you wanna record drums, you're gonna need at least one microphone. Most people use more than one microphone, but if you have one, you're probably gonna want it to be a condenser microphone. But if you have multiple microphones, like let's say you have three or four or something like that, you're definitely gonna need a bigger audio interface that has more inputs because there's no way you're gonna be able to record four microphones if you only have two inputs. Also, if you're using four microphones, you're probably gonna want or these right here, because otherwise you're probably not gonna be able to properly position the microphones and stuff like that. But let's say maybe you're making this home studio because you have a band or something that you wanna record. Again, you're gonna need an audio interface that has multiple inputs because there's no way that you can record a singer, you know, multiple microphones of backup vocals, a guitarist, a bass player, four mics on the drums, without having at least like eight or 10 inputs that you can record from. But yeah, honestly, I think that is pretty much gonna do it for me in this video. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope this was an informational video. I think I was able to cover most of the basic stuff that you're gonna need. Honestly, a lot of the other stuff is just going to come through, you know, making beats and making music and just experience because there's going to be little things here and there that you're going to want to work into your own musical workflow and your own home studio and stuff like that. So like I said, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys go check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below along with the playlist of songs I've produced, my beats on my Discord, all that stuff. Go check it out if you'd like to do so and I will see you guys next time. Some saving